Oh, welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, I was feeling pretty defeated in the last video, trying to get uh, reverse to work on this thing. Uh, I'm going to try one last ditch effort before we uh, move on to trying to replace the transmission. Unfortunately, uh, we really haven't had any luck finding a shop that wants to take this on, which isn't helpful either. I mean, we could try to take it back to the place that, uh, you know, gave the quote that blew them out of the water. And honestly, their, their quote wasn't too bad to R&R &R it. Um, it was about $1,700, I think. I mean, book time's 10 hours, so they're probably at 170 bucks an hour. That is one thing I think that they were close on. Um, I just didn't agree with their initial diagnosis that they needed a trans, but uh, now it's actually looking like it's, uh, that is probably likely. Uh, so the last ditch effort here, some of you have commented, they've had luck replacing the uh, transmission filter. So here you can see the pan, it's just a better light. This is a fluid that kind of drained down. I haven't put any fluid back in it. Uh, so that's just what's spilled down from uh, the torque converter or whatever's been in the case. You can see it's pretty black and nasty. Uh, there's the filter that's, uh, you can see there's there's some crap on it. Had an aftermarket gasket that's all plasticized. There's no date code on it, so I have no idea when it's been serviced last. Uh, inside the trans, I mean, it looks fine. I don't see anything. It smells like old fluid. It doesn't... Uh, doesn't smell burnt you know I've, I've smelled burnt transmissions before and you smell that from across the room this I mean it stinks it's just not not terrible so we're gonna try slapping the a new filter in it put new fluid in it and just see what happens uh, I'm not very confident but you know that's easier to do you know 40 bucks in fluid and a filter sacrifice you know saving me <laughs> They say it's 10 hours, but it's probably more like 20 on jack stands and in the driveway. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the filter and gasket, button this thing back up. Uh, the pan's pretty easy to drop. It's just six bolts around the perimeter and the uh, that's a dipstick drain tube or the dipstick tube. That's all that's needed to pop that down. Three uh, torques to pop the filter off. So easy peasy. Uh, but let me go ahead and get that new filter on. We'll see what uh, what else we're dealing with. So I'll also show you here these exhaust bolts. So you can see the one that I snapped off. The one that's loose, someone else put on. I mean, you see someone decatted it. Um, so it's been apart before, but I couldn't get any of these other bolts loose, which is crazy because it's been apart recently. And I'll get you on this side. And almost every single stud's got a different uh, piece of hardware on it. So... Uh, I did find out that uh, the OEM uh, stud is actually just kind of uh, pressed in and uh, I should be able to knock them out. We can, you know, I don't have to drill the manifolds if uh, they all snap, but uh, if that's the case, you know, maybe I can, if I get this pipe out of my way, I can go further and try to drop this stupid transmission down and get it back to the customer. Uh, also, uh, the battery drain issue. I took one of the batteries over to AutoZone. I tested bad, uh, which I kind of figured. I mean, this thing sat for more than a day, it'd be dead. And I, you know, it was even dead after a 20 minute drive. So uh, I did test bad. I've had one of my batteries in this car for a week, nearly a week, and it starts right up. So there still is uh, some issues. I can hear relays in the, the trunk clicking. Uh, that's common for the general module. I found someone that's gonna be able to um, rebuild that. That should help with some power drain and uh, restore some of the functions that uh, have been not working correctly on this car either. So you see we're a lot, a lot of dirt and grime under here. I mean, this thing's leaker, but I think someone's done the oil pan gasket. We still have a bit of a leak on this side that is hitting the ground. Something above the uh, AC compressor was dripping off that. It's a little wet around the drain plug, but that's not the source. It's, it's definitely up there. So I'm not sure what I'm not sure what's up there. I really can't see from here. We did put brand new valve covers on it, or valve cover gaskets on it, I should say, and all the CCV hoses. So we'll have you know this may be just residue, but I don't think so. So we'll have to kind of investigate that further. But the main issue right now is uh, this transmission. So let me get the new pan in, button it up, 
throw some fluid in it, see what this thing wants to do. All right, uh, so you can see this is the top side of the pan. You see all the kind of grossness, the top side of the filter, I should say, how gross it is. Um, wash material, not too bad, just really dark fluid. You can see again here, it wasn't a clean pan before this, so you know, don't take that for word, but it's it's pretty brown. Uh, this is what's dripped out of the, uh, the trans and torque converter. I cleaned this once already. We're just gonna wipe it down again real quick. Put on our new L-ring trans pan gasket. Part numbers, I'll put a link in the description. A Phoebe Bilstein filter. There is an O-ring that's sold separately from the filter. You wanna make sure that you get that and replace the O-ring for the filter to the transmission body itself. So let me go ahead, clean this up a little bit. We'll slap that back in. Well, we got uh, the pan back in with a new gasket, new filter, new filter O-ring. Cleaned out the pan, cleaned out the magnets, the mating surface. And uh, another piece of advice with this uh, fill tube. So whoever worked on this last, there's a support that bolts to the side of the transmission. That's not in place. So they actually had the fill tube kind of tucked in underneath the uh, intake manifold just slightly. So it made a real pain in the butt to get the... Uh, dipstick out to check fluid levels so just make sure if, if that's not connected up there you, you can see from underneath the engine we want to make sure that that is in place we can get fluid back in it uh, everything's buttoned up down here uh, I'm gonna go ahead and lower the front end down a little bit uh, so we can fill this up and see what happens uh, I, like I said I'm not too confident but we'll see and I also saw this that's really nice those are the fuel return lines. That is a floor jack or a lift post arm. So someone used the floor to raise this up because you're too damn lazy to go over a couple inches more and make sure that the uh, lift arm was on the frame rail. So that's nice. Uh, you know, if you're not gonna use the jacking points, I mean, this is missing the uh, pad, so that makes it a little difficult. At least use this, not the floor, not the freaking fuel lines, like you monkey. Um, so we'll have to address that at some point, whether we, we'll probably have to undo the line a little bit, let it hang down and, uh, flare in a new section. I don't want to use rubber under here. I mean, it holds the pressure and all that, but it's exposed. I'd rather have all metal. So that's, that's fantastic. More, more stuff, more time foolery on this thing. Uh, we need to do a oil change on this thing too. So, yeah, let me get this down a little bit, get some fluid in it, get her started up, and see if we have reverse. Uh, I, I know drive works fairly well, but obviously reverse not so much unless you wound this thing up and uh, it would finally start to move. So I, I'm still fairly certain that it's that clutch basket for the reverse that's shot, but, you know, like I said, 30 bucks in fluid to check it out an hour of my time or so to come down here and fart around and change it out. It's not a big deal. So we got four quarts of uh, Dex Merck from Valvoline. Uh, I do have some good uh, liquid molly transmission fluid. If we do get this running, we'll do a full exchange out with that. Um, after much, much searching, finally found a funnel that fits this puny opening in the fill tube. And it was from Walmart and it was like $2.99. Uh, the other thing I don't like is this bottom is screw on. Uh, I've tried <laughs> picking up a whole bunch of other funnels and they don't fit. You have to put a piece of hose in there, then that always leaks. Uh, but uh, this seemed to work. Uh, so we got four quarts in. Let's go ahead and give an initial start. Uh, I believe the capacity on this is uh, a total of eight liters. You can do the conversion. But initial fill from a pan drain says about four quarts. So we'll start there. We got to get her up to 30 degrees C uh, and then set final level. But really at this point, all I want to know is do we have reverse? Uh, we should be able to get that. So let's see if she'll start. Yep, fired up. All right, so I'm going to cycle it through the gears a little bit. I'm going to start in the basement down in one. I already felt that engage. Just giving it a few seconds to uh, kind of pump fluid through all the circuits. I 
can hear it kind of clunk a little bit when I change each one. So it's telling me it's doing something. First. We got neutral. This is verify. Put the parking brake on. Yep, definitely neutral. Let's try drive. I mean, I can feel it shift the car. So then we try it. Got your fingers crossed. I got my toes, fingers, and butt cheeks crossed. Let's see. I hear a little engine flutter. Does she actually roll back? Let's see. I got the parking brake still on. Nothing. Take the parking brake off. Tries to move when you rev her up. Here's some of that rough running. If she wants to move your rev her up. That could still be low fluid, but I don't think so. I mean, it goes right in a drive. You can see it here. Here's reverse. Nothing. Rev up. Tries to move. going to drive and moves instantly so I don't know guys maybe I'll get this thing outside let her heat up check the level I mean it should still move but I'm thinking uh, she's done what the plan is from here uh, we did the oil change uh, I also took a look at these masks uh, I wanted to switch them side to side because uh, this side is still reporting way off the chart uh, I reoriented them. This one was facing backwards when it was over there. So I switched them side to side, looked up pictures online. I think I've got them oriented right. You know, feel free to let me know if I didn't. I wanted to get it oriented as best I could, again, to just rule out anything to see why this side's reporting really high. Uh, oil change is done. So let's start her up, make sure there's no leaks, and we'll get her out of the garage. Uh, plan from here is going to be the owner's gonna take it back. He is going to drive it a bit to get it hot. I don't know if we'll get it hot enough sitting here in the garage or the driveway to actually check the uh, level for the trans. So he's gonna take it back. We also need to uh, pop out the general module. I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Because of that, we need to have the windows down so you can open and close the doors without them slamming. Uh, so we're going to get this back to his house. We'll pull the general module out and I'm going to send that off to get rebuilt uh, so we can get some of these accessories working back. Uh, earlier today, I could hear the trunk just constantly trying to unlock. You know, it's been sitting in the garage for three days. Uh, definitely didn't go to sleep. Uh, so we're going to have to send that out for repair as well. I can hear other things right now just clicking and clocking and... Starter nice and strong. Hopefully that oil level goes out. Yep, there we go. Let's just try uh, running through a couple gears again. Right in. Neutral. backwards or is it rolling backwards it's going backwards okay so here we're in neutral nada right it puts off the brake we're not moving go put her in reverse put off the brake holy shite um all right let me close this hood and see if we can back her out see if it really does want to reverse or what's going on so give me a sec also i uh, just want to show we just did an oil change with uh castle gtx high mileage 10 to 40 eight uh seven quarts of that and one quart of lucas if you've heard this before this sounds pretty darn smooth 
I mean, I still hear a little tappy tap, but holy cow, just the oil change. We did run um, some mist, Marvel Mystery Oil in this before. Maybe that did help break some stuff up. I mean, I still hear a little bit, but man, she is so much quieter. All right, so let me get this out of the garage. Yeah, that totally happened. It just locked itself. One of the other things that uh, this thing likes to do. Let me see if uh, the owner's home can bring the spare key over. All right, well, we got uh, the door lock picked open. We got her out of the garage. Uh, she is moving in reverse. Like, as soon as I put it in reverse, I can hear the dry shaft, you know, kind of do its clank. Um, and she slowly inches backwards, not with a lot of oomph revs up a little bit, not moving, you know, as much as you want it to. Maybe there is still just a full level issue. But we gotta get this thing out and drive it. Get a hot check and here you can hear it. I'm trying to be a little pain in my butt, spitting and sputtering sometimes. Uh, but yeah, that, that tick noise is so much better. I'm hoping as much as, as long as we, uh, I'm hoping if we put some miles on it, She'll uh, quiet down even more. Hopefully that lifter will come back around. I'm trying to see here which side. That one's pretty smooth. It's usually this side, left bank that kind of spits and sputters. Yeah, that one's pushing nice and strong. That one about the same. I have to wait till it sputters again, but thinking it's usually the left bank. I mean, that's the map that reports off, so. We're gonna take it for a drive and I'll we'll scan it. See uh, which one is not reporting correctly. Well, we got the 850 back over to my neighbor's house. I'm gonna head over there tomorrow, pop that uh, general module off so we can send it out. Um, take it out for a drive. The trans is shifting a little better. Uh, we did get it pretty good and hot and uh, had to add about two more quarts. Uh, shifting a lot better into drive. Reverse is pretty much given up. Uh, he said it pretty much only worked in uh, when it was cold anyway, which might have explained what little reverse that we had before, but uh, I'm pretty sure that that trans is toast. So we're going to have to get back into it another time. Uh, so I'm gonna end this section and uh, just give you a little preview. I had some time today and pressure washed the driveway a little bit. You can see uh, kind of where I stopped. It's nice to get some of the crap up. There's some, still some stains where I dropped some transmission fluid. We'll have to go back at that and see if we can get that out again. But uh, still nice to get some of the crap out of the driveway accumulation from uh, winter months. So I will see you guys when we come back to the E50i.